So yeah, welcome back. We just had our dear friend, uh, Mr. Abimbala Jenike. He's, uh, like you said, a social entrepreneur and someone who has a passion for helping uh, underrepresented, represented. Hmm. underrepresented children. I mean, to get out of the... Uh, Normally you say underprivileged. Yes. Now they are underrepresented. And, uh, well, he left us with uh, a few thoughts about the act of uh, paying it forward. That is a simple act of kindness towards the next person. Deliberate. Yeah. Deliberate without uh, looking for Not any... Not too much of planning. Just Not get started. Just do it. You know, and um, I'm sure that some of us will still be wondering, you know... Where did we lose it? Where did we... Some may not even agree that we have actually lost that natural, cultural, mm. you know, thing about us, which in itself adds up for some people to being African, yeah. being your brother's keeper. Did we actually lose it? Or did we just lose focus? You know, a lot of the word, times when I hear that word, being your brother's keeper, for me, it's just a cliche. I don't see a lot of it. Uh, maybe not sufficient. Because, um, like he said, we have been so detached, you know, taken so far away from our roots, where we think we have people um, whom we legitimately are entitled to help, mm. to be of assistance to. The next person is probably a stranger. Why should you? Okay? Um, sometimes we meet some of these ladies with little children, especially the ones carrying twins. And um, they can be in one spot for like five years, if you take note. They're there with different kids at different times. And sometimes you begin to question. Like you said, you call a child, why are you here? Where's your mother? Where's your father? You know? Don't you go to school and all of that. I, I try to do that a lot of the times. But these people are not exactly very honest mm -hmm. because to some extent, correct me if I'm wrong, they'd rather be at that spot than be taken um, somewhere, yes. you know, where they can be rehabilitated. Um, so you're a stranger to that person. And it takes people like them because they have a structure. And yes. they can come again and again mm -hmm. and again and probably um, physically do, I mean, render this assistance. You know, not for some of, a lot of people who are so busy with their own issues. And um, it's difficult to see the physical act of rendering help, you know, so, that you can quantify. So we need to establish the credibility, you know. We, we need to do what we call a needs assessment first. Sure. Mm -hmm. You know, establish that, uh, yes, truly, these people need your assistance. Mm. Um, I'll tell you, I've been to some organizations where, for instance, we may have planned to give them, say, wheelchairs. Okay. But the needs assessment... Yeah, you when know, you now have a conversation reveal. with them. Yeah, there was even there, there was a place I went to, yeah. and uh, they had to open their store up, the storeroom up, and tell me. We have so much See, of what we you have are so, bringing. We have so much. You know, mm. could you do, do something, something else, right? So it's important for us to establish um, the need itself. Sure. You know how relevant it is, mm. whether to be appreciated and needed, and then even after the act of giving right? You need to still monitor the usage. For instance, if you give boreholes, yeah. you know, some people after f three, six months, the machine gets uh, 40 mm. and, uh, mm. Mm. you know, they... And that, and that monitoring thing comes out of genuine, you know, care. Exactly. You know, that these people actually need your help. Yes. And this is what you're doing. Mm. Um, for a lot of people, it's for the cameras. They call the news guys and they see we're giving this, we're giving this. And that's the end of it. Yes. You know, because the passion and the sincerity in helping that community or helping that set of people is really not there. For them, it, it's show. 
you know, a lot of the time. So what, 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 what shows like this or discussions with people like this tell me yes. is that we must be deliberate about it. Yeah, we which, must, he, which he mentioned. Yes. Intentional. Yes. Yes. And we should see them as a part of us. Yeah. Because if you see them as a part of you, then you won't just go today and tomorrow you're no longer there. Mm. Because it might be another need, you know, from what you have been able to help them with. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Helen, I have a suspicion about that. you. That you may just be setting up an NGO. An NGO ah, no, no, yourself. Seriously speaking, <laughs> um, seriously speaking, I really have had, um, I've been thinking about a lot of things. So you've been for, bitten for by time. the bug. You know, the elderly, the children, orphanage and all of that. And yeah. I, I haven't been able to find out that willpower mm. to get to it. So this is... This is a lot of help for we'll, me. We'll, we'll pray for you. I'm you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, our guest is ready, John. Yes. Uh, our next guest. Our next guest. Our next guest is ready to join us. And uh, he is uh, Excel Adelaide Samuel. He has such an interesting name. Mm -hmm. Excel. Excel. And he's into he the Nigeria? business. Yeah, yeah, I think <laughs> he must so. be. He Adelaide. must be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Excel Adelaide Samuel is into the business of saving lives, and uh, he is an abstract thinker. Wow. He's a professional counselor, a chartered mediator, and a profound spiritual therapist, futurist, and an entrepreneur. We have a few questions for him, I'm sure. And um, unfortunately, he's not here physically with us in the studio, but he's joining us um, via Zoom. Zoom. Yes. And so is he, is he on? Oh, so good to have you on the show. Good morning. It's great. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Adeleye. Um, I see Excel and I'm well, like, okay, is that excellent? Is that... Um, yeah, same word, excellent. Positive. Okay. Good vibes. Wow. <laughs> as we <we're> normally say. <laughs> okay, it's so nice of you to join us on the show this morning. So, um, Mr. Adile, I'm curious, very curious indeed. Who is a spiritual therapist? Mm. Thank you. And I'm excited that that also caught your attention. <laughs> I, I usually get that. You know, uh, a spirit therapy is a combination of the word spirit and the therapy. It's a combination of your spiritual side and your mental side to get you into the process of healing. Uh, what psychology will fix is just your mental capacity or your emotional being to get you to be fine. But what spirit to do is, the spiritual aspect of it is that you, man has a spiritual aspect of it. So we need to combine both the mental and the spiritual to make a wholesome person to get um, their desirable uh, um, healing or to their desirable place. That's what it means. I also have another question. Um, while he was introducing you, he said you are an abstract thinker. Ha, huh. what's that? <laughs> okay, uh, it, it is, abstract thinking just means, um, like you could check it online, it just means that you're thinking unusual. You know, you don't think like everybody would think. Or your opinion are quite different, but the opinion that works and it passed test of time. That's what it means. And what's the offshoot of that? What's the practical demonstra demonstration from that abstract okay. thinking? Okay, it, 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 it simply comes from the ability to look inward or take a deep observation and to come up with something that is useful practically that everybody can benefit from. You get it now? So, for example, the, the, the COVID-19, as we see it, the, there's some so-called ideology or philosophy that we have said ahead that we could likely have a pandemic. Mm -hmm. Because of that, all nations need to plan in this direction and do this. But some governments or some individuals ignore those signs. So those kind of people are abstract thinker who think 30 years, 50 years, okay. who think beyond religion, who think about the existence of now, and they think even 100 years or 200 years ahead. That's, that's it. That is it. Excellent. Yes. Mr. Adele Samuel, could you, could you please tell me where does the spirit of giving come from? 
Is it cultural? Is it psychological? Where? Where exactly does it come from? I, I think I will first say this. As human, the same way we have a feeling towards um, um, of helping people, which just come naturally, for example, when a woman gives back to a child and the child cries, regardless of how you're sleeping, she wakes up. There is a natural instinct with a man. So it is acknowledged and agreed that every man has the spiritual aspect of him, and also the, which you can also combine with the emotion as a way. So it is inborn ability to give. However, not everybody grows or nurture or mature in giving. That could be based on challenges of life, limitations, based on, of, on different ideology that people pick up. So the spirit of giving, it is giving to all. However, like we know that when you plant seed on the ground, not every seed grows the same way. Not every spirit or behavior or pattern of giving will grow. It is the one you pay attention to or you work on that grows. Okay. So we're paying it forward on the program today and um, you're helping us understand better what it is about giving. Now, how do we begin to teach our children early the importance of giving? Because this is a family show. And they say you teach them early, you catch them early. So by the time there are adults or youths, um, we probably don't need this kind of shows anymore. They already know how, what it is that they need to do. So how early and how do we begin to teach our children the importance of giving? How can families make it one of their core values? Okay, I think it's quite easy. It's easy to say that I tell parents, children become you. And I do say that children is a replica of the parent. As a matter of fact, children multiply a parent behavior over time. Mm. So the easy way to go about it is you need to be a giver yourself. You don't need to teach your child the giving. You need to be a giver. And your children consciously and consciously will pick that up. For example, you are going on the road. You give to the guy who is by the roadside. Your children observe that giving, not necessarily because you are telling them to give and they take it as a lifestyle. Even the children do something good. They even try to ask for that question. Daddy, why are you giving? Why are you doing that? So the first way out is be a giver yourself. You don't need to preach the gospel of giving. You need to be it. When you be it, people, it just spreads out. Just like that. Now, for example, it's like my lifestyle. I don't have to tell the people around me that they give up. For everybody who listens, I know excel. You know by nature, I wake up in the morning. I'm sending a post or checking on somebody because it has become a lifestyle. So I don't preach it, I live it. And because I live it, people, you see, characters and behavior is like perfume. Mm. It goes around and people catch the flavor and they follow you. That is the way to go. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Adele Samuel. Well, uh, we have just a few minutes uh, left on this program for you. But could you just quickly tell me, is there any difference between charity and philanthropy? Just in about 30 seconds. No, it's all the same thing. You know, uh, like I was going to I was going to challenge Madam Ellen that you don't need to register an NGO. You just need to start today. Okay? You just need to put something online and say, I need to do this. You don't need to register. There's no difference. All is as one channel. It is the motive to give to people back. Uh, the philanthropy can see because when I'm becoming rich, I give out. The one other one can see you. I don't, I don't have, but I can leverage on other people to give. All is about giving. There's no difference. The real thing is what is the what is in your heart and what is your intention. And we need to do that. And like I do say that to Nigerian, I say that the problem of Nigerian is not leadership, it's followership. If the follower can begin to do the lifestyle of giving and sharing. I, 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 I just go on and just, you know what, when I wake up in the morning, I want to make sure someone happy. You don't have to have money to give, like the other speakers said. So you just give, and, and, that, and that's the way it works. So just wake up in the morning, I say, I'm going to give. And I also say, I challenge families. Yearly, you should have a goal of giving your family. For example, the year of giving, I said for my family this year is that we are going to be concerned about other people, and we are going to respond to their needs. Okay, we're not going to ask them, how are you doing? We're going to ask, how are you doing, with the intention of knowing and after knowing, you also rise by doing something. There's a giving I've done in my lifetime that not all my own couple, but my concern and my passion and my empathy created the solution to come. And that is where you work. 
Thank you so much, um, Mr. Excel Adele Samuel. We wish we had more time, you know, to learn more about more from you about the act of giving. Very critical, very important at this point in time where so many people are in need, so many people are in a lot of trouble and they really do not have, um, they don't know where to run to. So things like what you're doing is really, really vital and important. We'd like to thank you for taking time to join us on today's show. We'll get back thank to you again some other time. I'm very positive so that you can help me, you know, to get started. Will you? No, I'll do for free. I'll do for free. Thank, <laughs> you. Mean, thank you. Thank you very much. John Ferro is waiting. Yes, Ferro is waiting, and that will be our segment. We'll take a break now, and we'll come back for our wellness center. Thank, thank you. you.